Fagan. I uh, live in New York City, where I was born and raised, um, although I've lived other places around the country as well. Um, I, um, I have a long history, many decades now, of activism and organizing in a variety of social change movements. The uh, silos that our organizing often has fallen into, uh, I, I believe, and I think others share this belief too, um, do not help us at all. That it's one thing to focus at a given moment in history on a particular issue or you know, crisis that needs to be addressed. But without making those links, between issues, we're going to miss the mark, and we're not going to build the movements that are strong enough to actually change what needs to be changed. Like, like many people, uh, first became really aware of uh, environmental issues around the organizing for the first Earth Day in 1970, I think that was. Um, and uh, I, I was not engaged in any of the organizing, but you know, I went to some activities around Earth Day and I was very aware of the massive uh, mobilization that went on, um, the turnout of people. And that clearly there was not only a, a set of issues that were very important, but uh, there was also, or at the same time, there was a, a base um, that the, it, was, it was, became clear to, I think, many of us that, that we weren't the only ones who were a little concerned about the quality of the air, the quality of the water, um, and the quality of our lives, um, given the kind of pollution um, and, and very, um, you know, uh, very obvious connections that we saw between pollution and the role of corporate, uh, large corporations in this country and globally. Uh, and put in the mix in there, the role of the military. Um, that uh, particularly at that point in my own consciousness, the, the devastation that wars, no matter what weapons are being used, um, that wars have always uh, resulted in a kind of degradation of the environment, um, of the land, of the of the the earth itself. Uh, so so early on, I understood that there was some kind of environmental issues that were actually quite important, and that the left, especially what I would call uh, the traditional left in this country, kind of poo pooed it. Said, oh, that's a that's an issue we can deal with later. And that always felt a little off to me. <laughs> Why should we wait? <laughs> What's what are, what are we going to gain by we? I mean, people of the planet. What are we going to gain by putting that issue off? What really was until uh, Superstorm Sandy hit New York City. This crisis was still unfolding, and and not only was it a recovery issue, but it also should have been a wake up call about how serious the climate crisis really already was. It also, it struck me, it was an opening here, an opportunity to go back to the, the my, some of my life's themes of trying to connect issues. One of the biggest challenges though, within that, that framework that I've experienced is helping people, finding the ways to help people see the connection between the environmental crisis, the climate crisis, and militarism. Um, and militarism is not only war, it is certainly war, but it's not only war. <laughs> the US military is still the largest single user of fossil fuels, even though they have been exploring, the Pentagon's been exploring you know, renewable energy, it's that they understand this a climate crisis and they are trying to get, quote, get ready <laughs> for it. Um, nonetheless, they have been the, the world's, uh, certainly our countries, I think the world's lo single largest consumer of fossil fuels. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. Uh, to say nothing of then what happens, uh, you know, how they use those fossil fuels to fly their jet planes and to roll the tanks and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, they, on that level alone, it seems to me there's an obvious connection to be made. In my experience, people, uh, there's been more of an interest coming from the anti-war movement and the peace movement in engaging in the climate crisis and environmental issues than the other way, uh, than people in the climate movement getting, getting it. It doesn't seem to be clicking for people in the climate movement. And let me finally say one other thing. One obvious way to, for me that we could move to make those connections is by a much stronger, clearer, deeper 
um, as the, the pieces of work around the United States budget, the U.S. budget. Um, and I forget what the latest figures are, but it's hundreds of billions of dollars every year that go into the U.S. military. Um, we all know. Not only is there waste, that alone probably save you know, several billions of dollars, um, but above and beyond the waste, what that money is spent on um, is, is about, you know, quote, protecting uh, U.S. economic interests, which are more often than not, not really interests that serve just your regular people, either here in this country or around the world. For all the good that I think uh, can come from personal, uh, you know, individual steps that people might take, that if we don't find a way to collectively work together uh, at at every level of go- well, first at, at every level of government, uh, I think I said this before that it, that we need motion at the city level, at the state level, at the national level, uh, because we need we can't depend on the fossil fuel industry to just kind of wake up one morning and say oh, okay, we've been bad all these years and now we're going to move off fossil fuels and everything will be good. It doesn't work that way. And we can't have voluntary programs uh, on these corporations. We need laws and laws that are enforced um, that, 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 that to hold corporations responsible, uh, to push them to insist that they make the changes. Uh, and we need those laws to include timelines and, uh, and uh, you know, ways to measure the movement off of fossil fuels and into renewable energies. We need specific enforceable laws. And without hope, you don't engage in the hard work of social change. Having a sense of hope has sometimes been hard, <laughs> given how massive the, the problems are that we're up against and the institutions and the forces the forces of evil, <laughs> I mean, to be simplistic about it, that, that's what it feels like. Uh, and yet there are things that give me hope. Uh, and mostly that's in the form of young people. I am amazed. And particularly around the climate crisis, I have met some of the smartest and com- most compassionate people who are like in their teens and 20s um, who are getting it. They may their entry point might have been climate, but they're connecting all the dots. Um, and they are bold and creative uh, and committed to the work. 